Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and boy am I feeling pretty ragged at this point. For the past couple of months, and even the, the past couple of years, I've really been putting the pedal to the metal to try to get ready for what seems like it's coming in this winter of 2021-2022. We have all sorts of supply chain issues that relate to you know the energy grid and every other part of our lives, especially food. There are all sorts of food supply issues from labor shortages to you know uh, environmental issues of growing crops, crop failures, floods, droughts, all these types of things all coming to a head including economic issues and geopolitical issues. It seems like it could be a really difficult winter. And the, it's kind of like the perfect storm that a lot of us people in the preparedness community have been preparing for. Uh, and boy, has it got me really tired. I have been working myself pretty ragged, uh, you know, just doing super long days I've behind me. I've really pushed over the past month to get this woodshed finished so that I could fill it up with firewood to help keep us you know, warm uh, and, and comfortable over the winter. Uh, but I've been working really, really hard. I know yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, I had a day where I just, I just crashed. Uh, you know, I, I had been getting not enough sleep, probably working too hard. And I, I think I was burning through some stumps to put in some of the footings for this thing. I inhaled too much smoke the day before. And I, I just crashed, I crashed my body. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a difficult time for people who are really trying to get ready for, you know, what's coming around the corner. I feel like I'm, do, I'm doing all the work for the next five years, you know, just in these couple of months, uh, you know, to get ready so that uh, you can have things that you need. Like if it's easy to get something now or easier to get something now than it might be to get it later and you think that you're going to need that thing, it just makes sense to get it. And I advocate that on my channel all the time. If there's something that you need and you can get it today relatively easily and, you know, a couple of months from now or a year from now, it could be difficult or impossible to get it. You know, why not get it now? You know, it might be a little extra effort uh, at the moment, but long term, you're going to save yourself effort and aggravation. But the oper uh, operative word in that is if it's something that you think you're going to need with emphasis on need. And that's, that's what I want to talk about in this video is the difference between needs and wants. And I'm not going to say like anything you want is just, just like throw it out, don't care about it. It's like, you know, kids, there's no Christmas this year. It's, uh, you know, that's not, a, that's not a necessity. Or like, we're never going to have ketchup on our hot dogs again. <laughs> you know, like no more condiments, you know, because they're, they're not a necessity. I'm not advocating for that. You know, it's great to have those things. They bring enjoyment to our lives. And, uh, you know, that's what being alive is all about is enjoying your life. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, it's important to uh, keep in mind that if the amount of difficulty and aggravation in order to get some of these discretionary things, some of these things that we want, uh, at some point becomes greater than the enjoyment that they bring to our lives, it's important to kind of recognize that and maybe recalculate. Uh, you know, it, if it's really easy to get ketchup for your hot dogs, you know, like ketchup on your hot dogs. I don't personally myself, but I know a lot of people do. If you know, and it's not a big deal to get it, that's great. Go ahead and do it. But you know, if it takes like you know several weeks of agony and you have to like you know barter away your your, your youngest child for it, it's like at some point the the scales kind of tip, and the, you know maybe that ketchup doesn't make it sense anymore. So at this point, I think it's important to kind of start cataloging things that we want and things that we need in our life. And there are a lot of things that I think a lot of us feel that we need in our life that are actually things that we just want. And I'll just give you a couple of examples of things in my life that I've shed away that I think a lot of people kind of think of as being requirements. Uh, one is restaurants. Uh, a lot of people just are not familiar with how to make their own food and they go to restaurants a lot. And by restaurants, I mean, you know, place where you go when you sit down, but also just like grocery stores where there's kind of prepared food made for people. Uh, I mean, that's kind of like a restaurant, except it's always takeout. And, uh, you know, doing that, it costs you more money. And I think it's important to think about whether or not it becomes worth it, you know, as things go forward. Here's another one, cable television uh, or access to television at all. I know for myself, I don't think, I think probably about 20 years or so, I, you know, I just haven't had television. It's pretty expensive to have cable television. I don't know exactly what it costs today, but I know I get mailings. Uh, you know, they come in the mail with introductory offers. It's like only X number of dollars per month. And I look at that X and I'm like, wow, even that introductory offer seems like a lot. Uh, you know, I, so that's another place where I think a lot of people think this is, you know, this is something you need, but that is totally discretionary. You could take all those resources that are being used for, you know, cable television access and put them into, you know, not even like, well, buy an antenna so you get television. It's like, forget about television, you know, just do other things with your, you know, your, your day, do, uh, do other things with your hours, do other things with your lives, do other things with that money that you would be spending on it. Here's something that's a little more practical. I, all that other stuff is kind of like, oh, we're going to restaurants and watch television. How about keeping your clothes clean? 
Well, it, talk about clothes, you know. I think a lot of people think that having new clothes is something that, or, or clothes that without holes in them. Here we go. Here's my my usual <laughs> kind of clothing that I'm wearing. You know, having, uh, you know, fresh looking clean clothes. I, I you know, when I used to go to uh, you know, shoots, I, I, I'd be a cinematographer, I'd be a camera operator. You know, I, I'd go around, it was kind of my thing that is like, I'm, the, I'm that photographer that's always like dressed like a bum. Um, I guess the term bum isn't really the preferred term, but you know what I mean? I, I dress like somebody, like a hobo. I don't, I don't think people like the word hobo anymore. I mean, it, but you, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, I dress like someone who doesn't have the means to buy clothes for myself. And I could have afforded clothes for myself. It's just, I chose to put those uh, assets, those resources into other places. But, you know, stepping back, once you have those clothes, whether they are full of holes or not, uh, you know, cleaning them, you know, is kind of important. Like how are you cleaning your clothes? Now I own a washing machine. I find there's a great convenience in that. I have the tools so that I could wash my clothes without a washing machine, but I like having a washing machine. It, I feel like the investment for the washing machine is worth the cost, uh, you know, is worth it because of, you know, what you get out of it. But I don't own a clothes dryer. I just take uh, the clothes and hang them on a rack in the house or hang them out on a clothesline outside. I've done that for a long time. I, probably about 10 years or so, and uh, it's fine. I mean, it, it's a tiny bit of extra effort, uh, the, the amount of time it takes to kind of drape them over a rack or whatever, um, but uh, you save on having to have, uh, you know, you don't have to buy a wash, uh, I'm sorry, you don't have to buy a clothes dryer, you don't have to uh, have space for a clothes dryer. I mean, that takes up a lot of space. I use that space in my house for storage, what would normally be where a clothes dryer would be. I can store things there. I don't have to pay for the electricity or the energy to run that thing. Uh, I don't, I never have to pay for it to be repaired because it's just a rack, you know? Um, so I, that's something I think a lot of people think of as kind of like a necessity. Like the, the big question about, you know, drying your clothes is like, well, do I do put in like softener sheets or not? Uh, you know, it, but you know, that's something that is, it's, it's a want, it's not a need. And I think going into the period that we're going into, it's great to kind of set things aside and think about like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to need food. So I want to make sure I get the food when I, I have access to it. I'm going to need water. I'm, you know, so I want to make sure that I have water access, you know, getting all that stuff set aside for yourself, but it can add a lot of stress to your life. If you're also going to make sure that I have cable television access, got to make sure that I, you know, have a, a, a clothes dryer, you know, so that it, I, you know, I could always dry my clothes. You know, a lot of these things, there are other ways of doing them. There are, uh, you know, kind of things that you can do without. And if you can kind of wipe those off your slate and not worry about them, that's an asset in your life. The removing worry from your life, that is, that's a commodity and that's an important commodity. So think about that. Think about the things you want. Think about the things you need. Worry about the things you need, but don't worry about the things you want. If you can get them, that's great. But if it's causing you a lot of stress, aggravation, you got to trade away your firstborn in order to get the ketchup for your hot dogs, start to think about whether that balance makes sense anymore. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.